स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया For elastica, we have the following function. We have the functional which we extremize or minimize the following functional which is the elastic energy from 0 to L uh, kappa square d s, right, where kappa is my curvature with the most general formula that we have just derived, right. So, this is my elastic energy, elastic energy of the beam. Sometimes we impose that the length is also fixed, the length of elastica or the length of the material is also fixed. So, sometimes we also subject, so sometimes we also subject to the isoperimetric constraint to the constant arc length or isoperimetric constraint, arc length, the constant arc length uh, constraint. Right? Uh, we are going to look at all these classes of problems. Now, in, in my first case, let us look at a case of elastica with, with no arc length constraint or a case for unconstrained optimization of elastica. Uh, okay. So, the setup of the problem is as follows. We have, so case 1, we have, uh, we have elastica let me draw the figure and it might be clear. So, we have elastica which is which is clamped between two ends, right. So, we have we have elastica which is clamped here. So, let me call this end point as x 0. So, let me call this as 0 and I call this as x 1, right. Let me call this as 1 and we see that we see that uh, we are not imposing no arc length constraint no arc length constraint at this point okay so which means that this is a case where we impose fixed boundary conditions fixed point boundary condition we have that y at 0 let us assume that the y coordinate at x equal to 0 is also 0 and so is the slope at at 0 and uh, and we have let us say that this is y equal to y 1 is 1. So, we impose the boundary condition y 1 at x 1 which is also 1 is 1 and we see that the slope at 1 goes to infinity. So, the slope becomes becomes vertical right. Okay. So, so essentially this is a case of elastica uh, between two frictionless guides, between two frictionless guides, between two frictionless guides with, with fixed, with fixed position, between two frictionless guide with fixed position and derivatives. but do not constrain, but it do, does not constrain the length. Okay. So, what we have is the following. So, we have, uh, so we have the length L which is also a fixed uh, perimeter, but it is an unknown of the problem. So, let me have that, let me describe the point x 0 is 0 and then x 1 is 1 and my arc length let me impose that the arc length at, at the point 0 is 0 and of course, the arc length at x 1 will be equal to L. So, we are imposing our functional, we are writing the functional in terms of its arc length. So, my j of y the elastica functional will be integral from 0 to L kappa square of s d s this is also equal to integral from x 0 to x 1 
uh, y double prime square divided by 1 plus y prime square whole cube d s right. We see that uh, well right now uh, this particular integrand is completely in the Cartesian frame. So, we can also replace my arc length element. So, this is also equal to integral of x 0 to x 1 y double prime square 1 plus y prime square whole cube times 1 plus y prime square d x right. Okay. Or what we have is the integral from x 0 to x 1 uh, y double prime square divided by 1 plus y prime square of 3 uh, minus half which is 5 by 2 d x right. So, we have to extremize this functional. So, the let us so we see that this is a functional with second derivative. So, we are going to use Euler Poisson equation to find the extremal. So, for so, we use Euler Poisson equation which is going to give us del f del y minus d d x of del f del y prime plus d d x 2 of partial f partial double prime is equal to 0. Notice that this particular, so what, what do we have? Notice that this particular uh, integrand is independent, it is independent of y, right. This particular integrand is independent of y. So, we have that this quantity is 0, this partial f partial y and we can integrate this whole, we can integrate this expression once with respect to, with respect to x, right, to reduce the order of this equation from fourth order to third order we see that this becomes, this becomes the following. We have that partial f partial y prime is equal to d d x of partial f partial y double prime plus alpha, which is my constant of integration. Okay. So, let me, uh, let me keep it as it is calling this as star. Now, notice uh, we have a standard result from chain rule. So, from chain rule I can write down the derivative of f d f d x. We can use chain rule to see that this is f of x plus f is a function of x y y prime y double prime. Right? So, f of x times y prime f of y plus y double prime f of y prime plus f triple prime f of y double prime right so also also notice again this particular integrand is independent of also x explicitly so it's independent of y it is independent of x so which means that this partial is zero right if this partial is zero i see that i can replace replace certain other quantities uh, well, this is also 0, it is independent of y. So, this is also 0, right. And this one, this particular quantity can be replaced from this star to come to the fact that this is y double prime d d x of partial f partial y double prime plus alpha, right, plus y triple prime f y double prime, right. And students can check that this particular expression is nothing but the ordinary derivative with respect to x of alpha y prime plus y double prime partial f partial y double prime, right. Okay. So, notice well to see that we can differentiate with respect to x, we are going to get back this expression in the previous line here which is underlined, right. Or we see that the partial the, the total derivative of f with respect to x is the total derivative with respect to this quantity. We can, we can integrate with respect to x again to come to the fact that f is equal to alpha y prime plus y double prime alpha del f del y double prime plus another constant. Let me call this as minus beta. Okay. So, 
So, we have simplified our Euler Poisson equation and now we are ready to substitute our expression for the integrand small f. So, our small f is uh, y double prime square divided by 1 plus y prime square to the power 5 by 2 and we see that once we do that, let me call this as double star. So, from and call this as triple star. So, from double star and triple star, I see that I get the following expression. Uh, after simplification, I get the following expression that kappa square which is 1 plus y prime square to the power 3 which is also kappa square is equal to beta minus alpha y prime divided by 1 plus y prime square to the power uh, 1 by 2 ok or, or I get that kappa my curvature is square root of uh, of this quantity beta minus alpha y prime divided by this square root 1 plus y prime square ok. So, so then well one way is to solve this equation. So, we need to solve this right. The direct solution is not possible. So, we use some substitution. So, we substitute again we start with the substitution y equal to tan theta y prime equal to tan theta. So, I get that y double prime is equal to secant square theta d theta d x and we see that my kappa comes out to be uh, we substitute all these expressions in kappa we get that this is also equal to secant well kappa no well kappa is by definition uh, y double prime divided by 1 plus y prime square to the power 3 by 2 and this is also equal to sin square theta by 1 plus tan square theta to the power 3 by 2 d theta right d theta d x right. So, we get that kappa is equal to this and we see that after simplification this comes out to be cos theta d theta d x ok or this is also equal to cos theta times d y d x. So, y prime of x times d theta d y right or I see that y is equal to tan theta. So, this comes out to be sin theta d theta d y ok. So, from here I get set of two relations I get that my d x d theta is equal to is equal to cos theta by kappa and my second relation is d y d theta is equal to sin theta by kappa, where my kappa can be replaced by this particular quantity which is cos theta divided by square root of. So, so replacing this using this particular substitution I get that this is also equal to this is also equal to square root of beta cos theta minus alpha sin theta right after using this substitution. Okay. So, this becomes so kappa becomes beta cos theta minus alpha sin theta and this becomes sin theta divided by square root of the same quantity beta cos theta minus alpha sin theta. So, the crucial part is now all we need to do is to integrate this quantity on the right hand side with respect to theta to get the parametric representation of our extremal. Now, I am going to quickly show the show the way to solve. Uh, well, before we do that we have used the substitution and we must also show what is the corresponding boundary condition for this substituted variable. Notice that y of 0 is 0 and also y prime 0 is given to be 0. This is my regular boundary condition. Now, that is only possible we have substituted y prime is equal to tan theta that is only possible when theta is equal to theta. Uh, so, theta 0 is equal to 0 and then we also have that y prime at 1 goes to infinity implies 
that theta 1 is pi by 2. So, my theta lies between the range 0 to pi by 2 in order to satisfy the boundary condition. Okay, so, then in order to solve, let me call this setup, let me call this set of equation as R 1. So, in order to solve R 1, we now start substituting, we choose R 1 is equal to, uh, so, so in R 1, we choose, we choose, we choose our constant a to be 1 by square root alpha square plus beta square and we choose my second constant b to be cos inverse of beta divided by square root alpha square plus beta square and once we use that our uh, our set of equations reduces to the following new set i am using another variable phi to be theta plus b by 2 and my new set of equations are as follows 2 a cos 2 phi minus phi minus b divided by square root of cos 2 phi and my second equation is d phi d y d phi is equal to 2 a sin 2 phi minus b divided by sin square root of sin 2 phi and we can see that this equation reduces to some constant c 1 times square root of cos 2 phi plus another constant c 2 times sin 2 phi divided by square root of cos 2 phi, right. And then the second integral, the second differential equation reduces to the following form sin 2 phi divided by square root of cos 2 phi minus another constant of square square root of cos 2 phi right all i need to do is to integrate this so we we note that in order to integrate note that we have the following we have that this particular integral we have two basic integral one is the integral of this quantity the other is the integral of this quantity right the integral of this quantity sin 2 phi by square root of cos 2 phi is known as the elliptic integral well, well, this not this one, this one can be directly integrated, this turns out to be negative square root cos 2 phi, I can integrate this right away plus a constant of integration. Okay? And the second integral which is square root of cos 2 phi, this can be written, the answer can be written in the form of an elliptic integral. In fact, this is the definition of elliptic integral square root of cos 2 phi d phi, this is the elliptic integral of the second kind phi comma square root 2. So, this is my elliptic, elliptic integral, integral of the second kind, elliptic integral of the second kind which is this one. Okay. So, then, so then let me write down the final answer, the final answer that I get x of phi is equal to c 3 plus c 1 e elliptic integral e of phi comma square root 2 minus c 2 square root cos 2 phi and y of phi is equal to c 4 minus c 1 square root cos 2 phi plus well minus minus c 2 elliptic integral of phi comma square root 2. Now, this final result is in the form of four constants c 1 to c 4 and the way to derive is as following. We It is not easy to find all these constants because we have done lots of substitutions, but note that my phi, the original phi was an angle with respect to the intermediate constant b and these are again this is a transcendental equation in general transcendental transcendental equation right and we know that now so the direct solution is not possible direct solution solution not possible but what we do is the following what we do is look at this that 
we need to properly. So, we know that cos varies from minus 1 to plus 1, but in order so that the square root is defined, the square root is well defined, well defined if the, the argument inside the square root is positive or, or I have that my angle 2 phi is from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2, right. Or I have that phi is from minus pi by 4 to pi by 4. So, that is my range of uh, the angle that phi can take. However, however, since I have already derived that theta was from 0 to pi by 2, this is something that we had to begin with, right. And uh, so, this was the larger range of phi. Phi will be certainly within this range. Now, also we have that phi is centered around 0, right. So, phi is, so we have a solution, why we have a solution uh, E 1, so E 1 with respect to phi equal to 0, right. So, it is centered around, centered around 0 well centered around phi equal to 0, which means that this situation is only possible when this range is further. So, only this is only possible when this range is further restricted, restrict, restricted to phi from minus pi by 8 to pi by 8. Look, we need a range which is centered around 0. But we also had to satisfy uh, the constraint that the original angle theta is from 0 to 2 pi, right. And so, so that is possible when phi has a much more restricted range. Now, all I need to, uh, so all that is left is we have to evaluate x at pi by 8. So, my boundaries are from minus pi by 8 to pi by 8. And we also had the set, note that we had the boundary conditions y of 0 is y of 1 is equal to 1, right. So, well, what we had was y of 0 is 0 and we had y of 1 was 1. From here, the corresponding set of boundary conditions are x at pi by 8, which is also at, well, so pi by 8 corresponds to the, the uh, sorry, the minus pi by 8, the left hand side limit of this interval corresponds to uh, the, the point 0. So, x at minus pi by 8 is y at minus pi by 8 that must be uh, that must be equal to 0. And the second set of point x at plus uh, well, so x at plus pi by 8 is 1 and we have y at plus pi by 8 is also 1 that is the second set of boundary condition that we have. So, we have four equations and we have four unknowns C 1 to C 4 and hence our problem is quite well defined. Now, before we wrap up this example, I just want to highlight how does the shape, uh, so the solution figure. So, how does the shape of my elastica compares with the shape of a unit circle? We are talking about the solution in the first quadrant, right. So, so in the first quadrant, if we were to plot a unit circle, if, if we were to plot a unit circle, it will have the following shape, right. And on the other hand, if we were to plot the shape of elastica, it comes out to be quite close, right. So, this question is why did not we just use the approximation in such a way that simplifies our problem and gives us a shape which is close but quite close to a uh, unit circle. It seems quite intuitive that the shape since it is quite close to a unit circle should have followed a, a functional which is very similar uh, to the one that gives unit circle as the extremal. But on the other hand, if we plot our elastic energy, if we plot our elastic energy, our elastic energy which is f which is kappa square, right. Once we know the solution, we can definitely plot the elastic energy. Now, for a circle, uh, let me, so this is my y equal to 1. So, for a circle, 
for a circle the elastic energy the elastic energy lies parallel to the y axis right so this is for a circle and for elastica this is purely a curve which is not parallel to the x axis right so it seems that although the shape of so this is my unit circle the shape is very similar to the unit circle my elastic energy tells or paints a very different story and hence uh, and hence the solution to this problem is non trivial right so so we can extend our solution methodology to another case which we are going to look at in our next uh, lecturing session so thank you very much for listening uh, so in our next lecture i am going to talk about the case of the variable end points where both x and y are also varying uh, we will also complete this uh, this example of elastica uh, by looking at another test case where we impose the length condition or the isoperimetric constraint so thank you very much for listening in this lecture thank you okay well the last topic of this lecture is we will continue our discussion on the case of elastica we are going to look at another case of elastica where we impose the length constraint so we, here we have here we have a case of elastica where we are going to impose our our length constraint so let me call this as x1 and let me call this the total length of the elastica is l so this is the case of elastica with fixed length constraint length constraint so now the set of conditions that we have is on the side on one of the end points x not equal to 0 so i have x not is equal to 0 and my second end point x1 is not known but at x not equal to 0 i have the condition y at 0 is equal to y prime at 0 is 0 so we impose the position coordinate as well as the as the slope equal to 0 and at x1 where x1 is an unknown so we don't know what is the position the the y coordinate at x1 we call this as y1 and uh, but we also have that the slope approaches the vertical or the y axis so the slope eventually becomes parallel to the y axis so we do have the slope information at this second point now uh, so this y1 is an unknown of the problem so we definitely we have to use our natural uh, our natural boundary condition so we use natural natural boundary condition right okay and further we have the length constraint we impose we impose the length constraint which means that my integral of ds from 0 to 0 to l is equal to l okay so we fix our length and impose the length constraint so when which means that the functional for which we have to the function for, for whose functional has to be optimized is the following so the function f is well i directly write the functional the functional f is 0 to l kappa square ds plus lambda times so lambda is my lagrange uh, my lagrange multiplier Lam lambda times ds from 0 to l right uh, where so this where this constraint is nothing but integral from 0 to l square root of 1 plus y prime square dx right okay so then i can certainly start by looking at uh, so so the boundary conditions that i have the natural boundary condition that i have is the following uh, well let me just uh, let me just write the final simplified form of this functional this becomes integral from 0 to l uh, y double prime square divided by 1 plus y prime square 
whole cube. So, that is my kappa square and times uh, well plus lambda times square root of 1 plus y prime square d x. So, this is my integral that I am trying to optimize. So, my natural boundary condition. So, this is my f my small f or the integrand and my natural boundary condition are as follows. We have to use the condition for higher order derivatives. And we see that this imposes the following constraint partial f partial y minus d d x of partial f partial y prime times eta plus. So, this is evaluated at x 1 and times plus eta prime partial f partial y double prime imposed again at e x 1 this is set equal to 0. So, we individually set each of these quantities to 0 to get to natural boundary condition. Okay. So, then the solution I am going to right away use our solution to the previous test case. The solution the solution to my Euler Poisson equation from our previous example is directly found out to be del partial f partial y prime uh, is equal to d d x of partial f partial y double prime plus alpha that is from our previous case. Okay. And finally, we have that uh, we have that uh, well note that this is nothing but this is nothing but equal to 0 at x equal to x 1. So, this is nothing but the from the natural boundary condition this is 0. And also uh, we see that uh, this quantity is also this quantity is also a uh, well what we have is the following this quantity or this minus this quantity is equal to 0 from our natural boundary condition from natural boundary condition at x equal to x 1. So, that comes brings in the conclusion that my alpha will be identically equal to 0. Right? Okay, so, alpha is a constant and that will be 0. So, which means that from my previous case uh, I can directly write the solution to the Euler Poisson right from previous case with alpha equal to 0 and we have uh, we have the introduction of a new constant lambda. We see that our equation reduces to the following form my f is y double prime square 1 plus y prime square to the power 5 by 2 plus lambda times square root of 1 plus y prime square. For this f my solution my equation reduces to the following 1 plus y prime square in the denominator is equal to lambda plus beta times 1 plus y prime square to the power 1 half. Notice that the quantity on the left hand side is kappa square and again we use the, the same set of substitution to solve this equation that is y prime is equal to tan theta and then again we are going to get uh, we are going to get a set of two equations. So, this is again from the previous example we are going to get a set of two equations d x d theta is cos theta by kappa which is in this case coming out to be cos theta by square root of lambda plus beta times cos theta and d y d theta is equal to sin theta by square root of lambda plus sin uh, theta. And then the solution follows a similar methodology. We again use a uh, similar set of substitutions to come. So, let me write down the final solution. The final solution uh, for this case comes out to be the following. So, x of phi is gamma times 2 elliptic integral of the second kind of phi comma k minus elliptic integral of the first kind 
f of phi comma k and the param the parametric representation of y is 2 times gamma of k uh, 1 minus cos phi, where my angle phi, uh, where my angle phi is such that sin k times sin phi is sin theta by 2 and also the constants k is square root of lambda plus b by 2 beta and my constant gamma is square root 2 by beta. So, that completes the solution to this constraint elastica problem.